following program on Ave Verna 24 is classified for general audience. It is intended for all ages. It contains little or no violence, no strong language, and little or no sexual dialogue or situations. Very good evening and you're joining with us on another episode on Business Best and this is a platform where we showcase the best in the business and we will be introducing to you people who have excelled in their particular field in order to showcase their latest developments in their respective industry. Now, I'm pretty sure most of us out there, I've come across people who are wanting to buy a vehicle from themselves, but right now with the economic conditions and you know the economic crisis and some other external factors, it's very difficult to, and to afford a vehicle at this time. But also the automobile industry was also struck with various other challenges and to discuss about that we have Hashan Gunathilaka, who is the founder and managing director of Leaf Lanka to share his experience in the automobile industry. And also Leaf Lanka has been doing quite well despite the challenges that we have. So with that introduction, Hashan, thank you very much for taking the time to join me on the show today. First of all, thank you Shanali and Derana for having me to discuss about Leaf Lanka on this platform. <laughs> All right, so Hashan, if I'm not mistaken, now Leaf Lanka was introduced uh, to Sri Lanka in 2015 or 14. Yes. Yes, and uh, it was quite recent, but mm -hmm. now the business has been struck with so many challenges, and especially with the economic crisis and the COVID pandemic, and you know, especially with the import bans as well. But I want you to tell our viewers a little bit about Leaf Lanka and how mm. you got into the passion of you know coming into the automobile industry. Yes, first of all. Uh Back in 2014, uh, I was very, I mean, young and I was in my 20s, early 20s. And then I had this passion for vehicles and uh, this uh, dream of Leaf Lanka came into uh, reality because of a very random incident where one of my friends wanted to get a new vehicle. So he contacted me because I was very passionate about vehicles. And then uh, uh, his name is Nirosha. So he co-founded uh, Leaf Lanka at uh, I mean early stages, and right now he's there. So uh, back in 2014, we uh, initially imported just a one vehicle for himself. Then what we thought was, why don't we try to uh, sell it off and promote it in Sri Lanka and sell it off? So uh, that's how we started uh, Leaf Lanka, and then uh, back in 2015, we incorporated Leaf Lanka as a company. All right. Uh, now, if I'm not mistaken again, Leaf Lanka initially started off by importing and selling um, electric vehicles, mm -hmm. right? So, yes. what? how did you form that interest? Because electric vehicles were not very popular at that time. So, mm -hmm. what made you think that you wanted to get into this business? Actually, yes, that is correct, uh, Shanali. Uh, EV was very, I mean, new to Sri Lanka and also for entire world back in uh, back in 2014. Because there were only few uh, models uh, available that time. Uh, we initially imported Nissan Leaf, particularly Nissan Leaf. That is how the name Leaf Lanka came into the uh, our mind. So uh, uh, initially, uh, what we thought was uh, the uh, EV, the electronic vehicles, were the future of uh, vehi uh, vehicles, automobile sector. So uh, the global uh, population in terms of the electric vehicles rapidly uh, increasing back then. So what we thought was we should, I mean. Uh, be the first to import, I mean, uh, promote them in here in Sri Lanka. How did it actually work? Now, when you said you wanted to promote EV vehicles mm. here in Sri Lanka, how were the responses you received? Because if I'm not mistaken again, like Sri Lankans are not ready for change. You know, the acceptance of change is very rare. rare. So when shifting into electric vehicles, what were the responses that you got? Yes, initially the people were very reluctant to, uh, I mean, go for an EV vehicle because of the... Uh, I mean the range. Some I mean uh, some uh, factors was the range and the places to charge the vehicle are very limited. So nowadays, actually, the I mean basic models have uh, more than 250, 300 kilometers range. So uh, people have changed their mindset and uh, now they have moved into electric electronic uh, 
EV vehicles. Yeah, that's right. Now, especially with you know the fuel crisis, also people yes. must be thinking that people who have already bought EV vehicles must be like praising the Lord. Like, thank goodness I brought an electric mm -hmm. vehicle at this point. So now, coming back to again the topic of electric vehicles, what was the current situation at that time compared to now? Do you still feel that people are ready to make that change? Yes, now the people's mindset have been changed and they are more, I mean, uh, open and they are very uh, like to have an electronic vehicle at their, their home. So uh, now the people are getting used to it and they are eagerly waiting till the ban lift and uh, mar uh, market will be open for importation. So I think uh, most of the people will go for electronic vehicle rather than going for an internal com combustion engine vehicle right now at the moment. Okay, as soon as you started business back in 2015, after how long was it that the import ban was imposed and how did you manage to like shift into keeping up with business in the automobile industry? Yes, the initially when we talk about the business, uh, back in 2014 we started uh, importing electronic vehicles and then uh, suddenly during 2015 the government policy changed and uh, policy made uh, electronic vehicles to put on more taxes heavy taxes on electronic vehicles so we have we had to stop uh, importing electronic vehicles back in 2015 and then we uh, switched and we shaped our business to uh, import uh, electronic uh, sorry internal combustion engine vehicles and hybrid vehicles back then from 2015 to 2019 there were no such big uh, problem going on we ha we could uh, able to uh, do the business as usual but uh, without EV, we had to do uh, normal petrol and uh, hybrid vehicles. But anyway, we had our business. So uh, b back in two th uh, 2020, there was this uh, import restriction came into effect. So with that uh, ban or the restriction, we had to stop all the importation uh, functions in our business. So that is our core business process, the importation and uh, selling it off in Sri Lanka. So with that change, uh, we had to look into other alternative options. What are the available options to do and run our business uh, as usual? So we thought of uh, switch, uh, switching to uh, used vehicles category. So currently, we are doing uh, registered vehicles. And uh, apart from that, if somebody, let's say, Chanel, you have a vehicle, you want to sell it off. So you don't want to uh, get, I mean, uh, tired about the calls and the people who are coming to uh, see the vehicle. So you can uh, give, I mean, bring your vehicle to our yard, our vehicle sale, and then uh, you can give us the, uh, I mean, uh, part of getting calls and sell it off your vehicle. And then we will charge a small commission and we do that business as well. So we do buy and selling and the uh, selling other people's vehicles. Coming back to the topic of EVs, now considering the spare parts, there were so many other various issues that you know people consider before buying a vehicle. Mm -hmm. So especially when considering the availability of spare parts here in Sri Lanka, do you think our country has the capacity to cater to that? And does Leaf Lanka also provide that service? Yes, currently we don't do uh, vehicle spare parts selling at the moment, but we would assist our customers with the uh, all the uh, spare parts uh, functionings and all other uh, categories as well. So it's like uh, from uh, A to Z uh, function. So we would uh, do the registration and everything for our customers. That is how the business works. But uh, we will uh, assist our customers to get the all the spare parts needs. Okay. Do you think Sri Lanka has the capacity right now, considering the automobile industry, to provide this type of service and readily provide any spare parts uh, which is required by the customer? You mean particularly into EV vehicles? Into EVs, yes. Yes. We have the capacity in Sri Lanka because uh, every, I mean, uh, there are most of the uh, spare part dealers in Sri Lanka. So they would uh, able to uh, provide all the necessary uh, batteries and everything here in Sri Lanka. But it takes time uh, most probably to uh, lift the all the import restrictions. So 
we have to wait and see about the future. Right. Asha, now as you said, there has been a high interest rate imposed for especially vehicles in Sri Lanka before buying, you know, and people have been finding it difficult to afford vehicles at this time. So have you ever faced a decrease in demand for vehicles from Leaf Lanka because of that? Yes, correct. That is the, I mean, uh, currently the most uh, challenge we are facing right now is about the interest rate. Uh, more than 80% of our sales are depending on bank loans and leasing rates. So uh, most of the customers, they go for a lease or a bank loan. So with the current, I mean, uh, you have to pay about 30 to 35 percent interest rate annually for a vehicle. So uh, it makes uh, vehicles more, I mean, uh, expensive customers for uh, purchase. So it has uh, caused uh, our demand to get very uh, low at this time. Have you come up with any uh, mechanisms to cope with that? Uh, currently, what we can do is uh, that about the interest rate, uh, we don't have any, I mean, we, we don't have uh, control in our hands. So, we have to wait uh, till uh, central bank uh, lower the interest rate future, That's right. in future. Okay, Hashan, before we continue with our discussion, we'll have to go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon. You're watching Business Best. Stay with us. Welcome back to Business Best and we are in discussion with Hashan Gunathilka who is the CEO and founder of Leaf Lanka. Now Hashan, in the first segment we left off on talking about the EV demands in Sri Lanka as well. Now if, uh, you also mentioned that Leaf Lanka is now, you know, it shifted, it had to make changes in order to survive in the market and you know being a businessman you have to adapt into various other things in order to survive, especially when there are, you know, unexpected crises happening. So. When uh, talking about buying and selling, now people usually can consider other um, companies as well. Now, Leaf Lanka is buying and selling uh, cars from other different brands as well. So why would anyone want to come and buy a vehicle from Leaf Lanka rather than going and buying straight away from the company itself? Yeah, the Shanali, the, the thing is, uh, if you take uh, the, I mean, the popular brands, the parent company or the authorized reseller in Sri Lanka does not provide all the categories of vehicles. I mean, in the sense of, uh, let's say, in category of car, they don't do every sort of uh, models in here. So they do tropicalized versions of uh, particular models only. So we can cater for a big, uh, I mean, customer base regard, uh, re with the more variety of uh, models. And we do have very uh, uh, competitive price in our stock. So that is why a person should uh, come to Leaf Lanka rather than going for a parent company or other business. Uh, that's a big question that which comes into my mind also. Having a competitive price now usually now when you're buying and selling it's uh, you know you have to put in a price to have a profit as well. So how do you manage the price range and also you know when purchasing a vehicle people consider a lot of characteristics that are basic characteristics of a vehicle about the mileage about the time that the vehicle has been used and whatnot. So what are the other characteristics or services that Leaf Lanka is providing in order to um, value add to the vehicles? Yes, correct. Uh, currently, uh, uh, earlier the case was we would uh, we would uh, sell new vehicles, brand new vehicles. So we would give with a warranty, and uh, there are no any things to I mean no hassle or anything for our customers or ourselves. But right now we will uh, I mean we are doing uh, the used vehicles category. So we have to put value addition to the used vehicles in terms of uh, minor repairs, and uh, we have to recondition the vehicle. Uh, in a very good shape and with very good condition. So we would uh, do that, uh, we would go extra mile and uh, put some new, uh, I mean, parts and we would uh, recondition the vehicle in terms of maybe the painting, painting work or maybe tires and engine parts. We would replace them and make it a very good condition vehicles uh, for our customers to use. So that is uh, why a customer would come to Leaf Lanka to buy a second, uh, second hand vehicle. So basically, uh, 
would you call it modifying the vehicle? Uh, sometimes we would uh, do modifying as well and sometimes we will do the replacement of uh, worn parts and uh, it's about the reconditioning it's to a good uh, conditioning uh, condition. that's amazing to hear because you know doing all of that service and you know reconditioning the vehicle as well still you are able to have a competitive pricing and that's amazing to hear by the customer's point of view as well now as an entrepreneur in the automobile field uh, what are your thoughts on the shifting towards ev evs in the future do you yes. think it's beneficial to the country and the consumers or everyone as a whole of course, uh, Shanali, because uh, in uh, when we talk about EVs, it's about zero emission. So it does not uh, affect the planet and uh, it saves money for the country and the user as, as well. So um, when we are comparing uh, the global statistics on EV uh, vehicles, the market share, the global market share has been increased by uh, the number of units have been increased uh, more than 100 percent globally uh, from 2020 to 2021 year. So it's a huge uh, increment in uh, global aspect. Uh, when we compared, uh, China is the uh, main uh, country that is using electric vehicles at the moment. So their increment is about 155 percent. You can uh, get the idea about the uh, EV market when we talk about the statistics. So in terms of the total population of the vehicle in the, the world, so the electronic vehicles EV category has been increased by 4.5, uh, uh, sorry, 4.6 percent. That is a huge number. So uh, in 2022, the first half, the total units have been sold about 3.2 million units worldwide. So that's a huge number. People are shifting towards EV because of its, uh, I mean, uh, the use of the EV vehicles and the co cost effectiveness as well as the uh, environment impact as well. Very, uh, it's very sustainable transportation, I would say. Okay. I do understand that, you know, the world figures are quite great, but comparing Sri Lanka, you know, we don't see a lot of EVs here mm -hmm. and that's because I think as we mentioned earlier that people are not you know accepting change at the moment and also because of the import bans as well do you think that sri lanka will be adjusting into this change of course shanali now we are getting more inquiries from our customers they are eagerly waiting till the ban lift and uh, they are i mean still inquiring about whether they can import an electronic vehicle at the moment with any uh, sort of a permit or something so i w i would say uh, when the lift uh, or the import restrictions goes away uh, hopefully by a uh, couple of years i mean uh, upcoming years uh, we would have i mean uh, customer shifting from the ordinary vehicles to ev vehicles uh, Okay, so now again coming back to business now there were so many challenges that you know the automobile industry was struck with especially with the COVID pandemic then the import banks then also the high interest rates also. So what were the other resorts that alternatives that you resorted to in order to you know stay in the business world? That's correct Shanali with the I mean these uh, last three years was very I mean uh, challenging for our industry automobile sector. So uh, we had to look, uh, look out for uh, other options as well. So the Leaf Lanka have shaped our strategy and we have get into another, I mean, two new businesses right now. So uh, like six months back, uh, we started uh, Leaf Lanka Solar Energy Limited. So it's a B2B mainly, we do retail as well. We do mainly B2B uh, uh, transactions with uh, solar uh, companies. So what we do is we provide uh, solar batteries and uh, solar inverters to uh, uh, solar installation providers. Uh, apart from that, uh, Shanali, we do have another business uh, based in uh, do internationally. So it's like uh, we do uh, export uh, tires, brand new tires to Australia, uh, directly uh, contacting China. So. Uh, that's a new newest addition to uh, survive in the market. That's that's amazing. I mean, I believe that you know, being a businessman, you should be able to adapt into anything, considering you know the unexpected challenges that we are facing in Sri Lanka, especially. 
And I've also been, you know, researching about Leaf Lanka and I've seen you, you know, uh, traveling to Dubai and, you know, coming back. And how does that work? W what's the business that you've been doing there? And how have you, you know, uh, come up with various other alternatives in order to, you know, bring in foreign reserves to the country? Yes, what we did was uh, Dubai, there's an international market for tire uh, business. So uh, I went there and uh, we researched about the suppliers and got a few suppliers who can provide with uh, good quality tires for Australian market. So there uh, I have contacted uh, several suppliers and uh, uh, from the contact I can uh, send uh, tires to Australia directly from China itself. So it, it does not have to re-export it from Dubai or any other country. So with the restrictions going on in here, so I thought of why wouldn't uh, try to get some uh, foreign currency to Sri Lanka. So I act as an agent there, middleman, so earn uh, in dollars and uh, bring down that uh, currency to Sri Lanka. That's actually very important because Sri Lanka is experiencing a depletion in foreign reserves and you know it's important to know that you know individuals like your entrepreneurs like y'all are trying to help in some way or the other in order to bring in foreign reserves to the country. So now as an entrepreneur in the automobile industry what are the changes or policy am amendments that you think that we need to take in order to have a more stabilized industry in the automobile industry? Yes, Shanali. When we look at the economic uh, changes and everything, I think uh, what we should have is, as a whole, uh, not only about the uh, automobile sector, for every business to stabilize, we should have a national uh, uh, policy. So that will uh, affect every businesses around Sri Lanka. So I think with a national policy, uh, there will be less, uh, I mean, uh, unprecedented changes and there would be more stabilized and uh, more, I mean, predictable uh, policies around there. So businessmen like us uh, can uh, adapt and uh, do business very, I mean, in a good way with those changes. And uh, in terms of the automobile sector, I would say we would uh, love if the market opens again for imports, but uh, as we all know, there are some restrictions for it. Uh, we would uh, wait and see till the, uh, I mean, better times comes. And uh, if I, if you ask me, uh, what is the, uh, I mean, uh, change you would require? I would say, uh, I would uh, recommend if we can uh, lower the interest rates that will be very helpful for every businessman in Sri Lanka and even for customers. They, they, ca they can't afford a vehicle right now, they can't afford That's a house. Right. So we have to bring down our interest rates so the business will uh, operate as usual. Yes, as you said, Hashan, you know, the traveling has become a luxury. Not just travel, but also, you know, affording a house or any sort of asset, I would say, because of these difficult times in Sri Lanka. Well. All we have to do is, you know, hope for the best and uh, f hoping that we have a stabilized economy in the future. So, unfortunately, this is all the time we have on the show. But uh, thank you very much for sharing your experience in this field. And I wish you all the very best with Leaf Lanka as well. Thanks, Shanali. And that was our episode on Business Best. We will be back again next week with another product or service that will interest you. Just in case you can watch us on air, you can always re-watch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash other than English. I'm Suzanne Shinali. Stay safe and have a good night.